I'm still here today. Today. I'll give you that. Today. But we'll see. A serial police impersonator. The garbage disposal is a fuck boy, but I got it to work, right? Anyways, talk to you guys later. All the ones rolling. Wallahi, and welcome back to the vault. Today's video is an update to the Jeremy DeWitt court status. I've recently received a bunch of audio and video from another pair of police impersonators in Florida, but I put this on hold in order to provide this update. Now, I'm going to cover the charges in Orange County and Osceola County. Both jurisdictions have some interesting updates that I wanted to share with the true crime community. I'll start here with Orange County and wrap up with Osceola County since there are a lot of updates and evidence requests that I need to go through. Now we'll also cover what Jeremy's been doing in the meantime, so what he's been doing since he's been out. To refresh your memory, here are the original charges as outlined in the charging documents. Charge 1 is a felony organizing, planning, and participating in an intentional motor vehicle collision. Now, this charge is pretty obvious. Jeremy is accused of setting up a motor vehicle crash or intentionally causing a crash. Now, this is allegedly, in mind all of this is alleged, uh, one of Jeremy's well-known tactics. Now, this is a third-degree felony. Charges 2 and 3 are fa false and fraudulent motor vehicle insurance applications, which are third-degree felonies. Now, this has to do with Jeremy using his personal insurance for commercial activities or, you know, putting it into Rania's name or into his company's, you know, he, he kind of plays hopscotch with his different registrations as well as his insurance and he only uses personal insurance. I don't think he's ever had commercial insurance for anything. Now, charge four is for the false and fraudulent insurance claim, which is from one of the many alleged instances of causing a crash intentionally, then cashing in on the injury and repair claims. Okay, so charges six through nine have not been officially charged, and part of me is wondering if this was done to preserve the ability to charge Jeremy again in the event that he get up, gets off light. They kind of seem to be the more serious charges, which I don't know if they come from a second event or if they're just, you know, part of something that they can use to leverage to maybe get Jeremy in, uh, force him into some sort of longer sentence. Now, for more information on these particular charges, I go through them one by one, and I'll be linking the videos at the end. There's two videos, one for Orange County and one for Osceola County, where I go through each and every charge, and then I go through the evidence that supports it as well. So you'll have the opportunity to make that decision on your own, and let me know what you think down in the comments. Now, here is the first motion that was granted to continue the trial at a later date, which was scheduled uh, for the pre-trial on September 20th, 2023. Today is September 23rd, so this would happen a few days ago. And the trial was supposed to happen on October 2nd, 2023, and this request was approved. Now, as many of you know, I've, you've been watching my channel for a while, you've been following me, you know that I was intending on going to this particular trial. But I've been waiting for the pre-trial to happen first, because once the pre-trial happens, then we know the trial is going to happen, because it's constantly moving and shifting, especially with these types of trials, and Jeremy's known for taking plea bargains. So, I waited, and I was smart to do so. Now, I am intending to go to the trial in December, which we'll get to here in a moment, okay? Okay, like I was talking about before, on the same day Jeremy's motion was approved, his public defender filed another motion of continuance in order to collect mitigation to get an evaluation, which kind of makes me wonder if they're doing a psych evaluation on Jeremy, and to get some depositions from witnesses. Now, Part of me wonders if Jennifer is going to be interviewed. It seems like all is not well in paradise, and I sense, my little spidey sense is telling me, Jennifer is turning on Jeremy again. This time, I have a feeling she's going to do it the right way and not put it all over the internet, but actually follow what the prosecution says to do and actually give them evidence, real evidence and not back away this time, but we'll see. 
Now here is an updated timeline from Orange County. Now Orange County has yet to post the updated documents, but on September 20th, Orange County posted that the motion was approved and the pre-trial conference has been moved to November 29th and the trial has been moved to December 11th of 2023. Now that gives me a about a two week timeline to put something together if in fact I am going to attend the trial. Now uh, it kind of makes me wonder if they're going to be uh, negotiating a plea bargain and maybe that's why they're kicking the can down the road. Now here is what we know about Jeremy since he's been out of jail on bond. On July 30th, Jer Bear was caught out in the wild like a raging wildebeest. All I gotta say is Akuna Matata. But before we move on to the next fact, I'd just like to point out one thing. Where in the world is Jen Jen? You know she's on the gram following everything Jeremy is doing and everything his family's doing. She is a little bit crazy, you know. Okay, so another thing that we know Jeremy has been doing is scrambling to get money together. It seems like Jeremy was able to save his home by acquiring a second mortgage. Now, this paperwork was filed on July 31st, 2023, the day after Jer Bear's beach outing with the fam bam. He was in foreclosure, then out of nowhere, he was able to refinance with an FHA loan, which is between 7.5% and 8.5% APR, which is extremely high. Now, real quick, I just want to give a shout out to one of my subscribers, Scott. Scott, you know who you are. I'm not going to reveal your whole name, but he sent me this, uh, this information in this snippet that I'm sharing here. So I just want to say thank you for sending this information. Uh, I've got so many great supporters that send me information to my email. Uh, if you have information that you think I should know, feel free to send it to my email at truecrimevault329 at gmail.com. Once again, that's truecrimevault329 at gmail.com. That's T R U E C R I M E V A U L T 329 at gmail.com. Now, before I move on, I just want to point out that this is a second mortgage again on his property, which I assume was used to cash out some money to pay the mortgage up to date and then possibly put away some money to pay bills while he goes back to jail because I'm pretty sure he's anticipating that. Okay, so the last couple pics I have is Jeremy with his wife, daughter, and family enjoying some pool time. My good friend Shane first alerted me to this, so I have been watching closely on various sites. Now, let me know if you would like me to ask Shane to do another video reviewing the current trial data along with any thought that we have surrounding Jeremy, Jennifer, and Rania and their kind of love triangle going on there, which is so gross. Now, put Shane, type Shane in the comments below if you would like to see that happen again. Uh, you can also check out a couple videos from Shane at the YouTube channel, So You, not So I, but So You, Dated a Police Impersonator. It's done a lot of good work so far. It's a relatively new channel. Why don't you guys head on over there and say that uh, the vault sent you. Okay, so here are some of Jeremy's AKAs, which Vidler and Ramsey accused him of creating to throw people off when they search his name so they don't find his criminal history. Now, my personal favorite here is Jeremy, because let's face it, Jeremy is Jeremy. Now, I know Jeremy watches videos about himself. I, you know, he just can't help it. Now, Jer Bear, listen closely. If you come across this video, feel free to email me. I'm always willing to listen, and I will let, even let you put out your side of the story, if that's what you want. So reach out, Jer Bear. All right, so let's move on to Osceola County. We're going to cover two different cases within the same county. Uh, the charges are different and the cases are separate, but they're linked in trial and discovery. So I'll go through the charges for each, each case, and then I'll go through the documents and updates since they are, in fact, tied together. Okay, so as a quick refresher, here are the original charges for the first case. 
there are nine total charges. All of them are felonies. If you look closely, all of the charges have to do with fraud and failure to properly register as an ex-offender. I'll go ahead and read through the charges. So first one is false and fraudulent motor vehicle insurance application, uh, failure of an ex-offender to report insured vehicle, false and fraudulent motor vehicle insurance, false and fraudulent insurance claim under 20000 Communications fraud over $300, staged motor vehicle crash, false and fraudulent insurance claim under $20,000, communication fraud, and organized scheme to defraud under $20,000. Now keep in mind, I will be linking both detailed charges videos for Osceola and Orange County at the end of the video. Okay, now as you can see, they have reduced the charges down to two counts of failure to register as an ex-offender. Now, folks, use your rhyming words. I can't say the actual word. Now, this has to do with the fact that Jeremy would play games with this registration by not properly registering his vehicles with the ex-offender uh, offender registry. He would register his vehicles under Rania's name as to avoid having to have them on the registry, allegedly. So for the second case, the charges are pretty simple. There are 13 counts total. Counts 1 through 10 are failure to report the change in vehicle, and counts 11 through 13 are knowingly providing false registration information. That's pretty straightforward information. Uh, he didn't provide his information to the registration, which means he was probably hiding it in his wife's name. And, you know, he had like some like 20, 30 vehicles at one time. It was absolutely ridiculous. But he did have a fleet of vehicles for his business. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense, but I don't know. I don't know. Nothing Jeremy does really makes sense. So, okay, now these charges as well have been scaled back to just two failure to register, register charges, which makes me think they may be negotiated plea bargain, just like I said before. Uh, let me know what you guys think down in the comments below. Do you think they're trying to negotiate with Jeremy and you know, maybe holding some things back to say, okay, we can charge you later with X, Y, and Z. Let me know what you guys think because realistically, if you go through my other videos, there's lots of evidence that uh, Detective Warner uh, laid out and he's part of the Insurance Fraud Bureau. So yeah, let me know what you guys think. Go ahead and watch that other video as well. Now, on August 10th of 2023, the prosecution filed a notice of supplemental discovery. The prosecution is handing over a CD with the ex-offender registration videos that Jeremy is required to watch, which tells him the rules that he needs to follow. Now, it looks like they also have a USB flash drive with YouTube videos downloaded. Now, Jennifer Burton released a bunch of evidence against Jeremy on YouTube over the years, so this leads me to believe that Jennifer may have cooperated by handing over evidence based on the date. Jeremy got out of jail in June 2023, and by August, the prosecution files a notice of supplemental discovery, which can't be a coincidence. Jeremy gets out of jail, Jennifer thinks they are going to be together, and boom. Jen Jen is alone again, and Jer Bear is back with his wife and kid. But wait, there is more. Now, on the same day, the prosecution filed an update to the types of evidence. Now, it looks like they have statements given by people as well as written and recorded statements, and we all know how Jeremy and Jen like to record each other. Uh, they have papers belonging to Jeremy. They have electronic surveillance, which leads me to believe that the police were either watching Jeremy or someone gave them ring, ring camera footage and video from Jeremy's office. Now, if you remember, Jennifer had access to all of that. Now, they got some documents that belonged to Jeremy, which probably came from a search warrant search of his premises. Uh, there are some reports and statements from experts, which is probably related to insurance experts and psychologists. And they also got some papers that don't belong to Jeremy. 
And last but not least, they recovered things from Jeremy that have been tested for DNA. I'm not 100% sure what that would be for, but that's what the paperwork says, so, you know, that's where we are. Okay, so on the same day, August 10th of 2023, uh, the prosecution filed uh, the prior criminal history. Now, in this filing, it seems as though the prosecution is trying to use Jeremy's criminal history against him as evidence of prior acts. Now, as most everyone knows, Jeremy has an ex extensive history of fraud and police impersonation. He's been arrested well over 30 times with multiple felonies and jail sentences. On September 12, 2023, the prosecution filed another notice of supplemental discovery containing a DVD with jail calls. Now, if you spent 20 minutes on Ferrati International Operations Channel, you would know that Jeremy is famous for dry snitching on himself through his jail calls, so this is probably what they're looking for. On September 13, 2023, Jeremy's counsel filed a notice of taking depositions. They are requesting to take the deposition of Jeremy's probation officer, James Woods, on September 28, 2023. Now I know what you're thinking, James Woods, the famous actor? Nope, just James Woods, the probation officer, which Jeremy cannot stand. So I'm sure he doesn't have anything good to say. On September 15, 2023, Jeremy's counsel filed a motion to continue. The pre-trial conference was scheduled for September 20th of 2023, and the trial was scheduled for a short time after. Now, Jeremy would be waiving his right to a speedy tri trial. Now, this happens a lot when people are out on bail. They try to extend as long as possible in order to get either their affairs in order or to create distance from their arrest to the trial, which clouds the memories of potential witnesses. R. Kelly was extremely famous for doing this. He committed a crime uh, back in the late 90s. He was arrested in, I think, 2001 and didn't go to trial until 2008, so seven years later. So, not saying uh, Jeremy DeWitt is R. Kelly clearly didn't have the money, but same tactics, nevertheless. Okay, now again on September 15, 2023, the prosecution submitted another notice of supplemental discovery. It looks like they received a cache of new jail calls from the stack system, which I think is the archive system for jail and prison calls. They must have yielded a lot of information from the calls if they keep going back to the well. Let me know what you guys think. Okay, so next on September 18th, 2023, the prosecution once again filed a notice of supplemental discovery. They supplied another USB drive with YouTube videos, and I wonder whose videos these are. Could these be Metro State videos, Motor Ones Moving, Real World Police, or perhaps it's Police Tube, or God forbid his uncle, or even Froddy. Let me know who you think these videos are in the comments below. And while you're at it, don't forget to like the video and subscribe. Okay, finally, the motion of continuance was granted. The new pretrial date is November 17th of 2023, and the new trial date is December 5th of 2023, once again giving me a couple of weeks to get my act together. Now, this is within one week of the Orange County trial, so see, Osceola starts on December 5th and Orange County starts on December 11th, so I assume that they've coordinated together. Now, I wouldn't be surprised if he files for another continuance. Let me know what you think. Please don't forget to like the video, comment down below, share with a friend, and if you've made it this far, you might as well subscribe. It didn't cost you anything. This has been a presentation of the Vault True Crime Network. Love and sloppy kisses. I'll catch you on the next one.